Dublin's Smithfield neighborhood was recently voted the second coolest in the world by Time Out magazine. Its popularity with young people due to its lively bars and relaxed vibe means that housing in Smithfield is especially hard to come by, in a city where housing is already hard to come by. The area is also home to a case which sheds a light on why the capital has such a stubborn housing shortage. In February 2022, plans were submitted to Dublin City Council to build 52 social and affordable apartments at the junction of Brunswick Street and Church Street, on a site which has been vacant for some time. The development comprised three blocks, the tallest of which was eight storeys, with a commercial space on the ground floor. The Bonobo Pub is located a couple of doors down on Church Street, whose owners submitted an objection to the council, arguing that the development was too overbearing and would overshadow their beer garden. In August, Dublin City Council requested changes to the designs to decrease the height of the apartments. The developer complied by removing one floor and reducing the number of apartments from 52 to 46. On September 1st, the council granted planning approval, reasoning that the development fit into the city's wider development plan. The council welcomed the higher density along the Lewis Line, several Dublin bus routes, and a dedicated cycle lane. The council also determined that the reduced height and design of the apartments were appropriate, and that the size of the development's courtyard was below the recommended size, but acceptable. Later that month, Bonobo submitted an appeal to the National Planning Appeals Body on board Planola, again taking issue with the overbearing nature of the development and its design shortcomings, arguing that Dublin is a low-rise city and should remain so predominantly. The following March, in 2023, the board's assigned inspector, after six months of consideration, recommended that planning be refused. In the majority of cases, the board will side with the inspector's recommendation, which it duly did, and in October 2023, planning was refused. Let's now look at the various stakeholders considered in the inspector's decision. Firstly, we have the apartments across the road. Nobody from these apartments submitted an appeal to the board. Next, we have the communal space, deemed smaller than the recommended size, and the five north-facing apartments. In this case, the stakeholders are the residents who don't yet live here. Would it not be more reasonable to let them decide for themselves whether a small courtyard or a north-facing apartment is a deal-breaker? Instead, this decision has been made on their behalf and the apartments prevented from coming into being. Additionally, given that this is an infill site in the heart of Dublin, regulations should and do allow some discretion here, which the council availed of. Next, we have the protected building, an observation which came from Antashka, not the owners of the house. Antashka is an independent NGO committed to protecting Dublin's architectural heritage. Next, we have Bonobo, appealing on their own behalf. And finally, we have the residents of the terraced houses around the corner, none of whom appealed. As we can see, the only stakeholder acting on their own behalf is Bonobo. The rest involve the inspector ruling on behalf of stakeholders who don't see fit to appeal themselves. As for the pub's claim about Dublin remaining a low-rise city, would a seven-storey building really be high-rise? Seven storeys is the norm for cities like Paris. And would it not also be reasonable to say that pubs in higher-density cities are more valuable, all else being equal? It's important to stress that we don't take issue with the sincerity of Bonobo's owners or with the planning inspector. Our issue lies solely with the increasingly centralised and undemocratic nature of the planning system. The owners of the pub had ample democratic input. They had the right to engage with Dublin City's development plan, and they had the right to make observations and objections to this specific development, which they availed of. City councillors are also elected by the people, and the council weighed up all the factors and made a good faith decision. But by appealing to onboard Planola, the case moves from the local and democratic arm of the government to the central and quasi-judicial. And due to the weight put on one inspector's report by the board, it centralizes a highly subjective decision, not just in one body, but in one person. The weighing up of the competing rights of the beer garden, the protected building, the rights of the landowner, the rights of future home seekers, and the need to densify in Dublin inevitably involves refereeing competing interests. Like football, what we've done is introduced an elaborate and expensive system of VAR to check refereeing decisions, but unlike football, an appeals board is operating on less sophisticated information than the council, not more. In the Smithfield case, had the board approved planning, the pub's owners would have had the option to appeal again through a judicial review, a second VAR, so to speak, which would entail even more delays and costs. This is inefficient. Local governments can use facts on the ground to fit plans to local circumstances and reach compromises, which the council did in this case, 
whereas judicial bodies just say yes or no. And even if the roles were reversed and it were the council refusing permission, the council must live with the decision and its impact on housing needs in the area. Of course, if the council's planners were making gross errors or the council were breaking the law in some way, having an appeals body is a good and necessary thing, but that is not the case here. Now, after 18 months of countless documents, meetings, consultants, appeals and costs, we are left with an empty site in one of Dublin's most sought after neighborhoods. And few will shed any tears for the developer. After all, developers are among the least popular cohorts of society, along with bankers, in part because of their role in Ireland's last property crash. But delays and costs in the planning process are ultimately reflected in the price and shortage of housing. Smaller developers who cannot sustain the increased risk and costs are forced out, leaving us to rely on a smaller number of large developers. It's pretty clear that renters, buyers, developers and Dublin City Council all want the same thing. More speed, lower costs and more housing. As we discussed in our previous video on Cork, the Irish state is an international outlier in how centralised it is. Centralising government functions removes a basis for comparison and puts unsustainable pressure on single bodies and individuals, which increases staffing difficulties. In our opinion, the bar for overturning a local authority decision should be raised significantly, and housing bodies like Onboard Planola and the RTB should be split up and regionalised to move us away from Ireland's trend towards single-threaded government. The real-world consequences of cases like this are significant. According to the housing theory of everything, Western housing shortages drive inequality, climate change, low productivity growth, obesity, and even falling fertility rates. These housing shortages are most felt by younger people, who increasingly despair of finding a place of their own. At least they can drown their sorrows in one of Dublin's many well-lit beer gardens.